mostly what I do use is the ECAs and I absolutely love them. I love that I've been able to actually come completely off of pre-workout. I love the energy. I love that I don't have a, a crash. I don't get jittery um, feelings. Uh, it also doesn't uh, exasperate my heart condition, which is a, definitely a bonus. <laughs> um, and I'm able to get in a really awesome heavy workout throughout the day as a personal trainer. I'm pretty much going for 10, 12 hours working out with my clients. I work out for myself and uh, with the ECAs, it's helped me to lean out uh, great, really great. I'm loving the results and enough that I'm doing a co contest now for Maximum Cover Girl. So yeah, I love it. <laughs> I'm really excited to try more therapies down the road. I have to say the before and after uh, was actually, it was really impressive, the results that I got from it and being able to noticeably see the difference uh, in the pump and the volume, the definition that I got from using Hercules on a workout. I love being a part of the Type Medical family. Uh, John and Charisse are amazing. I love the personal touch that they add uh, with everything, actually asking how things are going. Um, they really care and for me being passionate and invested in what you're doing and what, what you're putting out there means more to me than just um, you know having a name and uh, an idea this one they're they're passionate about it and they care and not very many people do that um, to that level of quality anymore so being able to be a part of a company that really cares about their clients and customer service is amazing and I look forward to continue working with Titan Medical for years to come. What's up guys, John back from Titan, and I'm here with my APRN, Cass Fernandez. So today we're gonna to cover some of the most common questions that I think Cass gets in his visits. Um, the first one I think is pretty common, right? And is basically, am I married to this therapy? Will I have to stay on this hormone replacement therapy or testosterone replacement therapy for the rest of my life? You're right, I get that quite often. Patients wanna know, once I start this therapy, am I gonna be on it forever? So the short answer to that is no, you're not. So when you come to us, we will evaluate your needs for hormones. Right. If you need a replacement type of therapy, we will prescribe one to you. However, our therapies are very therapeutic. So we're gonna approach that in a way that doesn't shut your system down. Gotcha. So we're gonna have gonadal support. We're gonna be controlling your estrogen levels as well. Mm -hmm. So when it's time, if you decide after years of therapy and feeling mm -hmm. great, you wanna come off, you can do that. And we'll safely do that with a tapering down approach. Gotcha. Okay, now with that being said, what we would do, is we would lower those levels safely and you will revert back to what you were previously as your hormone levels. Now, mm -hmm. big disclaimer, as we age, our hormone levels begin to decline, okay? Right. So you may not be as high as you once were. However, you can safely come off of these therapies and have your production that you naturally have. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's a good point out there. So you guys ask that a lot. I wanna make sure the medical provider could properly explain it to you guys and, and it's it's really some good information you know people really don't know this information they think uh, once i go on this i'm gonna have to stay on this for the rest of my life i've seen this in some forums and online and stuff like that so it's awesome to explain it to people that sure. you don't have to be on this for the rest of your life let's say there's a health issue financial issue something goes on we can help properly get you off the exactly. healthy way um the second question is is you know Am I going to lose fertility or am I going to have a kid on testosterone hormone replacement therapy? Because we might get some, you know, people in their 30s and they still want to have kids um, or, you know, people in general are worried about fertility. What do you think? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, big question. Important question. We all want to know that, especially as men, especially as men in relationships wanting mm -hmm. to conceive children one day. Right. So common misconception. You start hormones, steroids, the negative things about them, abusing them. Yes, you can have some issues with them. However, again, our therapeutic approach with medical providers monitoring you closely, giving you gonadal support, yeah. keeping your function where yeah. it should be naturally is going to help you potentially conceive children. Right. Okay, we have therapies, glutathione and HCG, human chorionic gonotropic hormones. Those can 
help you have strong, healthy sperm, healthy gonads. So definitely we are gonna take care of you as best we can to help you with all of your goals, even if it is conceiving children. Awesome, awesome. So I think that's another big one. Now, what, what do you think is the other big questions that you get? I mean, is there anything that sticks out in your head You know that you get a lot of questions why commonly asked question i know you know uh and needles you know does it have to be an injection can it be an oral form can it be a cream can it be a gel for uh hormone replacement therapy and you know and basically i think oh, yeah. that question is yes right i mean i get i could sit here all day and talk about all the questions i get yeah. but that is an important one because patients want to know is this injectable is this a cream is this a, a lotion right. is this a pill so right. we do offer all of those of yep. course yep. Um, now they're indicated for different reasons specifically per each patient yep. so i will say that obviously injections are where it's at it's very precise way to deliver that medication yep. you know in a manner that you absorb it well now for other patients creams make more sense right. um, and as far as pills go you know that is an option as well right. um, but we will make sure we customize that approach for each patient each one of you right yeah because different people want different maybe administration forms and we can definitely offer that for our patients to customize that regimen form so it's great information there the other thing is uh you know the next thing i would think is 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 testosterone going to make me aggressive or going to turn me into arnold schwarzenegger well I mean, that'd be great, right? If we could all look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. <laughs> but the truth is, no, it's not going to turn you into a monster. Right. No, it's not going to make you super aggressive. Yeah. Now, that can happen with patients who are unbalanced, okay, right. without being treated by a medical provider. Yes. Hormones do change. They fluctuate. So when you change one, alter one, the other can have an effect. But again, our therapeutic approach here at Titan, we're going to make sure that your levels are balanced. So you have a positive reaction to the treatment and you feel well and optimized so it's all about balance so you're not mm -hmm. going to turn into you know an aggressive person that's mm -hmm. not what we do here at titan medical center mm -hmm. we're going to make you optimize we're going to help you with your health and overall wellness right so these are just a couple commonly asked questions by patients now i think we're going to do some more content along the lines and sure. bring you some more questions and answers of these common questions that patients might want to know the answer too, just like you. So stay tuned. We're going to bring cash back, APRN, or you might see him on your visit if you become a Titan Medical Center patient. So we appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you guys soon. Guys, stay strong out there, stay healthy, and now let's stay educated, okay?
I am Jessica the Black Widow Borga. I am a professional Bellator fighter in the featherweight division, and I come from Champions MMA in Lakeland, Florida. I definitely needed to up my recovery. I do a lot of training and I really need the extra help <laughs> for recovery, uh, as well as the vitamins for every time that I weight cut, I usually lack the nutrients I need uh, for how much I train. So I was told about it. I got into the Titan Complete as well as the Hercules Potion and the Immune Boosters and those are amazing to help with my recovery. Mm. <laughs> of course everyone would like to feel invincible, <laughs> um, but I would love to be able to train more and recover faster. Of course as we get older we're all kind of wanting that I'm sure. <laughs> I was actually surprised about my blood work. Uh, I thought that I was going to have low levels because my energy level kind of subsided a little bit in the end of the day. But we actually had a little bit of a test on if my testosterone was going to be normal for a woman or not because everyone that knows me thought that I was going to have high levels, but uh, it was normal. Everything was normal, which was great. It was good to hear, good to get a baseline for you know future blood work. So they've always been amazing. Everyone that works at Titan is super helpful, very informative, and knows their stuff about everything that they have here and provide here and they have been nothing but a help to me and very supportive. Couldn't be more thankful for them. The Titan Complete, the Hercules Potion, and the Immune Booster. Those have all worked together really well to provide me with what I need to recover amino-wise, vitamin-wise, and I always need help with my immune system. It's always been a little bit uh, <laughs> slacking because of my weight cuts, so <laughs> I've always needed that extra help and it's always helped me to stay healthier and I'm very thankful for that. I've never felt better. I have been able to train longer, train harder. Um, I've never felt better in my fight camps. I recover so much faster, less injury. Uh, don't wanna say that I'm completely <laughs> injuryless <laughs> because we stay injured uh, if we're training as hard as we're supposed to. So of course, with the help of the Titan therapies, I have been able to recover much faster and less injuries which is always a plus when you are a professional MMA fighter. So you can stay going, stay going longer and have a further career. Absolutely, and I think it shows. Um, honestly, I couldn't recommend them more to anyone and everyone that's in any kind of pro athlete or just in everyday life. If you're trying to get more energy, if you're trying to recover faster, if you're just trying to have a happier, more energetic life, definitely check out Titan. They're worth it. What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So every week, we come at you guys and give you guys great tips, tricks, and things to hopefully reignite that relationship or help those flames that maybe diminished along the way. Also, we bring some of our own stories and some of our own experiences into this. <laughs> and uh, this week, we want to share one of those stories with you guys. Uh, you know, this story kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of questions we get out there. So I get a lot of questions from a lot of different people. First off, when they find out that we have a son, they're like, oh my God, you yeah. guys have a son? I know, right? You guys have a kid? Really? Like, how old is, how old is your kid? And like, we tell them like, he's 11, going to turn 12. Oh my God, like, <laughs> really? Like, when did this happen? <laughs> well, this happened a long time ago, about 11 years ago, 12 yeah, yeah. years ago, because you know, of the childbirth, nine months, so... It's, it's been a long time now. So, you know, it's it's something people, they, they don't, I don't I don't think they realize or they, I don't know. They just they just don't think that we can do it. I, I don't know. I, think, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, I, honestly, what I think personally is probably just like our lifestyle, you know, because we do a lot of, we blend in a lot of things that like, if usually it's almost like you just have a family only or you just have like a going out life only or you just have a work life only. Me and John have somehow managed to balance it where we have a little of everything. I mean, it's, it's not an easy task by Absolutely any means. Not. It's actually pretty hard, but it's doable if you want to make it happen. So, you know, that's probably why, you know, they yeah. just, uh, they're appalled. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then the next question is like, all right, John, it's like, what, what's, when's the right time? When's the right time to have a kid? And I know everybody says this too, and this is what my response is. There's never a right time. It's never going to be perfect. Right. No matter if you have a lot of money and you're working all the time, you're like, oh, I don't want to give this up, or you don't have that much money, you're like, man, I, you know, I want to give my kid everything. Mm -hmm. 
You know, because every every parent should want to do that. They want to provide for their kid the best. Right. And you know, they're like, well, I'm not in the financial situation where I can do that. You never you know? are. And you know, and, and me, me and Sharice, you know, we weren't. We, we, we weren't. Nope. We, were, we weren't in not the best close. situation. Um, you know, at, at the point where we decided we wanted to have Peter, you know, we were we were financially stable to a certain extent. But, you know, we didn't have Titan. It wasn't like all that when we first decided we were going to have our son. Uh, because I knew it was going to be a son right off the bat. I told Sharice. <laughs> I told all the family members and anybody that said. I told him I didn't want no girls, like, man. Just for that, you're going to have a girl. And I was like, I, I listen, I only shoot Y chromosomes, okay? <laughs> My family only shoots Y chromosomes. And I'm going to have a boy. So I don't care. I can, I'll, I'll, I'll scream it off the mountains and off the heavens. I told him I was going to give it back to the baby stork if it was a girl, so. <laughs> And I you guaranteed know. it. I guaranteed it. I was like, listen, I'm going to have a son. My first go around, I can guarantee it. So, you know, at that point, it was like, we decided, you know, we're going to go through with this. We're going to have our baby. We're going to be married. Boom. All these good things. Um, it happened really quick for us. Like, you know, like other, really people, <laughs> other people that looked at our relationship, you know, that was another thing that they doubted. They're like, Oh, for sure. Because, I mean, we literally were only together. I, it was a very, it was probably like six months. Yeah. And we decided, it wasn't like an unplanned pregnancy. It wasn't like, right. oops. No, no, no. We like planned it. It was all based on my endometriosis and the doctors, even when he came to the, my doctor's appointments, they were like, she's probably not going to be able to get pregnant. Right. And now, of course, John's like, I'm up to the challenge. Ha ha ha. I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> so, you know, of course, there you go. Boom. Made it happen. Um, but it was planned. And everybody did think we were a little crazy, but obviously we're not that crazy. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people out there want to have kids still. And, you know, honestly, fertility's down across the big country. Time, big and time. And if you guys are looking to do any fertility or anything like that, type medical center, we can help you out here. Um, just want to throw that in there for you guys. A lot of people do want to have kids still, and, and some people are having trouble and stuff like that, along with COVID and all these different problems that could be having issues with the body. Mm -hmm. But at that point, we planned it. We started on our way. Sharice was pregnant with Peter. Um, you know, obviously, you have to wait nine months for that bad boy to cook. And along that way, was it was a Longest really good experience. Nine months ever. You know, um, I feel for some of the people now because, you know, without COVID before, you know, I went to every uh, every doctor's appointment with Sharice, no matter if I was working or yeah, whatever it was. Every single I one. made sure I was there. We did like the 3D sonogram, ultrasound, which was That's really cool. cool and cutting edge back then. Really cool. And now they have 4D. Oh, man. You and really like you see. go in this big room yeah, and you see cool. it, like you can bring family members in there. Yeah. And, and I don't know what COVID now. Like I literally talked to one of my friends who just got you know his girl pregnant, and they're like you know some of these hospitals or some doctors still don't want him to come in or oh anything like that. Oh my goodness, that would that, be terrible. That's a shame, you know, because it's an experience that you guys bond even more with this, or should be, you know. Right. And sometimes you can't be there all the time. I understand that with work and stuff like that. So, but definitely, if if you can. Make the effort, do it. Yeah, it um, does mean a lot to us females, just you know, so you know. It's support, it's support. And with yeah. hormones all crazy and going all nuts with females, <laughs> you know, they need that extra security, you know, because yeah. anxiety kicks in, insecurities kick in, their body starts changing. Yeah, and you know, they're looking not so, you know, we're like, woohoo, look at me, I'm so sexy. Yes. No, yes. not really. Yes. You know, and you know, then you start thinking crazy things and you're crazy. Yes. You know, so be there, support. Um, it's going to get a little crazy, but don't worry. You know, support your girl, your wife, whatever it is. Um, make them feel secure and they won't come at you like that, hopefully. You know, if you do things that make them feel insecure, it's going to just enhance that even more and they're going to be even worse with you. So that's just a tip from me. Okay. <laughs> okay? Um, so the next thing was, was, all right, so let's fast forward. Okay. So Sharice was working all the way up until the due date. Yes, I did. Okay? I worked all the way up to the due date. So literally, so when we went to the doctor and everything like that, they, they give you a due date and they say, listen, on the due date, this is when you're expected to Peter have came the on the actual day that he was due. Yeah. So that was, that never happened. That they never just, that's happened. like a roundabout date. That Usually it's happens. like a couple of days before, a week after, a week before, yeah. whatever. He was literally delivered on the day. Yep. Yeah. On the day. On the day. On the day. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it happened to be Father's Day, too. So that <laughs> cool. was just, it was really, really cool. Worked out. And, you know, Peter asked me just the, you know, a little bit ago, he's like, hey, he was like, you know, did mom still get you a gift? And I was like, yeah, she gave me you. That was the best <laughs> gift ever, right? You know, as a, as a man, you, you definitely want your son, you know, that's, that's your offspring, that's your legacy, that's who's going to hopefully pass on your name down the road and be everything. You want to, you know, invest in them the most you possibly can. It's your biggest investment except for yourself. Mm -hmm. So she works all the way up into the delivery date. Mm -hmm. So that night, 
She literally cooked the steak dinner and everything for me. I, I knew, remember. though, because I was already, before this, like, t- like literally, it was like a week before, I was having the Braxton Hicks is what they call it, right? Mm. And so I knew that this was coming. So that night, I told him, I'm like, we're going to have this baby tonight. Like, mm. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm having real contractions. Mm. I think we need to go to the hospital. And, of course, like, I'm like, I don't want him to be cranky. So I'm like, I'm going to cook a steak dinner. We're going we're gonna to eat. I'm literally, like, in the kitchen, like, <gasps> like, probably every, I want to say probably, like, every 45 minutes it would come, like, in a way where it was, like, super painful. Mm. And I'm like, all right, let, I got this. I got this. Like, so let's eat real quick because they're not going to have any food at the hospital. Mm. And so after that, we get in the car. Literally get in the car. Race down there. Driving down there because we picked out. A hot one of the top hospitals we lived in like 45 minutes 45 from minutes. so we had to drive all the way there so we drove all the way there and of course it's in the middle of the night so there's a shift change going out with nurses <laughs> so after she's dilated the whole nine oh they're like oh, all right listen it's time to go so at that point they're like you know what we don't have enough nurses enough staffs on hand so we're gown up I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I want to be the like the movies, like you know, they come give me. Hey, your son's born, awesome. You know, this whole time cigars, though, don't cigars. let him forget the, this backstory here. He's telling me this whole time. He's like, I'm not gonna be in that room, you know. I'm like, oh yes, you are. I'm not gonna be in that. I'll be out in the lobby waiting. They're gonna come and get me. I'm like, you've been watching too many movies. You're gonna be in that room. Absolutely. You're gonna be in that room. Absolutely. And the worst part about this whole entire situation, this was the worst part. I'll never forget it. Is that in all the movies they give you this white sheet. And they put the white sheet over yeah. you, and you have the baby. There's like a drape, you know, and like you no know, you white have, sheet. You have nurses. No, and, no white sheet, no drape, no nothing. Just but that. Yeah. And so like, <laughs> hey, listen, you know, we don't have enough nurses. The shift changed and all that. You're gonna hold a leg. I'm sorry. I'm like, what are you like, talking about? I'm a whole leg. I have leg? to now. I have to be in this process too. <laughs> this is crazy. So literally, I'm on one side of the, of her body <laughs> holding her leg. <laughs> One other nurse is on the other side, and a doctor's right in the middle. And at that point, he's like, "Let's do this, push, push." Now that didn't go; it didn't, it didn't take too long. Cause somebody's asked me like, "How long does it usually take?" Usually, it takes. You're usually pushing for hours and hours. Man, me and Peter, we were the team. Yeah. Forty-five minutes, bah, he done. was done. I don't think that ever happens. They told me too. They warned me. In your first pregnancy, you're going to be pushing. You're, you're yeah. going to be in labor. You'll be pushing probably a few hours. I'm yeah. like, pushing for a few hours? Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to make this happen. Yeah. You're coming out. I'm letting you know we're coming out. Yeah. He was ready to come out too. So so at that point, out. listen, I'm telling you guys, it, it's definitely graphic what you see. <laughs> and it'll definitely stay with I'm you like, for the rest of your life. Touch okay? Me again. What you see. But at that point, listen, this is something that it, it turns into a good memory. You know, you remember when your kid comes out. And you get to see, you know, what, what actually goes on. So it, it is definitely a truly humbling experience and something that will stay with you forever, okay? Um, and at that point, you know, finally Peter was born. Healthy, happy, you know, at that point we were happy. And then look at the grand result of what we got here. <laughs> but luckily he was, he was kind enough to, to grace us with this. his beautiful face today <laughs> in the office because I usually don't get him. So he, he got to... You got to come down after his school today. And I was like, you know what? Let's do this topic today. Let's talk about it. Because he's here in the office. You want to give a big smile for everybody and say hi? Hi. (laughs) (laughs) So this is an 11-year-old sixth grader, you know, going on to seventh grade after this. He's really going on like 21. Yeah. So, But listen, it's never a right time. So if you and your your partner love each other and you want to do that, go forth with it, man. Everything else will fall in place. Mm -hmm. And you'll do what you got to do to make things happen financially for your relationship. You know, remember, be each other's support system. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest thing that I see out there today is a lot of, lot of people are just so easy to call it quits. Yeah. All right. That's one thing. Like if you don't have kids involved, but when you have kids involved, it could affect them in a lot of different ways. And a lot of people have been, you know, in these broken up families and not to say that stepdads and stepmoms aren't great because listen, my dad, right? Married my mom, and at that point she had my brother, which is my half brother, and he took him in like it was his own. Mm -hmm. And you know, that happens out there too, and that's a great thing. But if you can stay together and keep that nuclear family together, there's nothing like that, okay? And it it, it instills these ethics and morals and things that we're missing these days with these kids. And that is our future right there. That's your future, our future, and these are the guys. Or girls, okay, because your girls are out there, just important. Yeah, girl and, power. And you guys are going to be ruling this country and making decisions about what we're going to be doing when we're old, okay? <laughs> so please, I beg of you guys, if you guys are our age, you guys are having kids, or you guys are thinking about having kids, do it. Do it for the right reasons, though. 
and make sure you guys are in it to win it together and you guys do everything you possibly can to stay together and create the best life for your kids out there. Don't abuse them. Give everything you possibly can to them. And that's Cupid's Corner for this week. Yeah. We want to you know, sum it up pretty quick. Um, but you know that was our, our story, I guess, in a little fast. This turned, out, this turned out pretty good. Turned out pretty good. It's still an experiment, though, so we're still going. So you know, it's a. Uh, it's it, not it's, an experiment. I'm telling you, he's he's you're, he's good. He's, he's good. good. So hopefully, this will be the future of Tight Medical Center, Uh-oh. And, and hopefully, take care of us. But uh, <laughs> that's just our story to you guys. Hopefully, it entertained you guys a little bit. You guys learned a little bit, and hopefully, you guys will take that to heart what I told you guys. Yeah. So. That's another Cupid's Corner. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're here for you guys every Sunday, 11 a.m. on ABC. And if you guys, you know, want to, you guys can DVR it. Or you guys can always check it out on our YouTube page. Just type in Tight Medical Center. All these shows are on there. And our social media platforms. Go check it out. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok now. <laughs> so we appreciate you guys all tuning in. We'll see you guys next Sunday. I'm John. I'm Sharice. This is Peter. And this is Peter. (laughs) We'll see you guys next week on another Cupid's Corner. See ya.